In this video, I'm going to introduce an airport problem as a simple application to cost allocation. So think about this hypothetical situation. We have three airlines and they are going to construct a new airport jointly. So small airline company, they need 120 feet runway and another airline, airline 2, requires a 240 feet runway and the larger one, they require 600 feet runway. So instead of constructing runways separately, they can be saved some cost by build one and share it. Then the question is how they should split the cost. So this is a airport problem. So we have three players and each player requires some cost if they build separately. So that's the standalone cost. So what's the efficient location? Of course, they jointly build a 600 feet one and split the cost of a 600. So the location assigns some payment to each airline company. So the sum of payment is 600, then that's efficient location. So we can consider very naive cost allocation. For instance, they can split the cost equally. But this is not good because airline one will block this allocation because airline one can build its own runway and it just cost 120. So this airline one has no incentive to participate this coalition. Then this is not individually rational. So this allocation is not fair. Many of you may think proportional rule might be good. So the sum of this standalone cost is uh, 960. So the smallest airline company pays 120 divided by 960, which is one eighth. So this company proportionally pays one eighth of uh, 600. And the second company pays two eighth, which is uh, proportional to the sum of individual cost. And the largest one pays five eighth. So this is the payment based on proportional rule. So you can check this allocation this payment rule satisfies co-allocation. So this is co-selection. So efficiency, you can see the sum of their payment is 600, so it's efficient. And individual rational, so the first company pays 75, which is less than standalone cost. And the second one pays 150, less than is standalone cost, and the larger one Page 375, which is lower than its standard cost of 600. So it's individual rational, and you can also find that is pairwise rational. So sum of the first two companies' payment, 75 plus 150, is uh, smaller than the cost of the largest non-way, 240, and the sum of the payment of uh, first and third that is also smaller than 600, what the first and third requires jointly. And second and third, also their payment, some of the payment is smaller than 600. So that satisfies pairwise rationality. So we can confirm this proportional rule is in quo. So can we say, is it fair? But there are many other properties or action for fairness. Now let's think about another situation. So Airline 3 decided to change their route to 
Chicago instead of New York. So it requires a longer runway. Say it requires 720 feet. So now the cost function, so standalone cost is 120 and 240 and 720. So first the company didn't change their uh, cost, but the last company requires more cost. So again, let's apply the proportional rule. So everything's are the same, but this denominator is different. And the first one is supposed to pay one ninth of the total cost. And the second one pays two ninths and third one pays six ninths of the total cost 720. So still, you can see this payment is in the core by looking at the individual rationality and e efficiency and the, the pairwise rationality. But compared to the original situation, airline one and airline two, they are required to pay more, although they do not use that additional part of the runway. So the airline one and airline two may consider this situation is not fair. So a good solution may have a desired property across different situations. So in that sense, proportional rule is not fair. So now we are going to consider another um, allocation rule that is sequential equal contributions rule. So players contribute only to the parts which are essential for them, and each part is equally shared among the players who require it. So we need to construct 600 at the runway. And first, 120. This part required by all three airlines. So this first part split equally. The cost is going to be split equally. And the second part, so the first part, first airline company, second and third, they are all use this part. And the second part, the first airline company is not going to use. The additional 120 is only used by second and third one. So the second and third one split the additional cost equally. And now the remaining part is 360 and only the third airline company will require this part. For this part, only airline company three will pay. So this is the allocation based on sequential equal contributions rule. So what's the, the total? So the first airline company paid 40 and second one pays 40 for the first part and 60 for the second part. And the largest airline company pays 40 for the first part and 60 for the second part and 360 for the last part. So their payment is 40, 100, and 460. And you can easily check this is in the core. And again, we can do the same exercise with different cost in which the, the largest airline requires a little bit more runway. So first part again okay, split equally among the three players. And second part, second 120 split equally between airline two and airline three. And last part, the remaining part is uh, 480, so the increased part 
the additional part is only responsible for last airline company. So the first and second company, their payment did not change. And only the last player should pay more. So in that sense, sequential equal contribution rule is better or fairer than proportional rule. Now, let's define coalition game based on this situation. So there are two natural ways of defining the associated coalition game. The first one is to concern the cost incurred for each coalition. So this characteristic function is the maximum cost of each individual standalone cost. So V of 1 is 120, V of 2 is 240, and V of 3 in requires 600. And by forming a coalition 1 and 2, they have to pay 240. By forming a coalition 1, 3, they have to pay 600. By forming a coalition 2, 3, still requires 600. Forming a grand coalition, it requires to pay 600. So this is one way of defining a coalition game. It makes sense. And another approach is uh, considering how much they could save by forming a coalition. So now we define different characteristic function. The difference between the sum of individual cost, what they have to pay if they build the runways separately, and the maximum of cost. So this difference is the how much they could save. So each individual, they can save nothing. And by forming a course 1, 2, they can save 120. And by forming a coalition 1, 3, they can save 120. By forming a coalition 2, 3, they can save 240. And by forming a grand coalition, they can save 360. This is another way of defining the coalition game. It might be good if a solution is the same allocation to different versions of a coalition game, right? So if uh, a solution is robust to define the way of defining coalition game, then the solution might be good. So now we are going to find the Shapley value to this coalition game based on the cost incurred, the first approach. And I'm going to skip the detail, but uh, you can check the Sharply value of this coalition game we defined is 40, 100, 460. That is equivalent to the sequential equal contributions rule. Also, if we consider another approach, the coalition game based on the cost saved, Again, okay, the Shapley value of this um, coalition game is 80 and 140 and 140. That's the amount how each player should save this. In terms of the cost sharing, their payment, each player's standard cost minus cost saved. That's their payment. So based on this approach, is recommend players to pay again 40, 100, and 460. So that means it is also equivalent to the sequential equal contributions rules. So the Shapley value is robust to way of defining coalition games. And also that is, uh, so here we have a quiz as we mentioned, we have two different versions of uh, cost allocation problems. 
and we can find correlation dash solution if core is not empty.